Hello, everybody, and welcome to the best and worst of Walt Disney World, brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Be sure to visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and this week I am joined by none other than Denny Sunderly. Hi, guys. And this week we're going to be talking about the best and worst of Disney Springs, all that it has to offer and where those offerings fall on that list for us. This was recommended by a listener um, in the YouTube comments from last week's video, so I very much appreciate that. Like we always say, we are always open uh, to future topics because really we're doing the show for you. So I want to know, we want to know what you uh, what you want us to talk about. Um yeah, so, um, but Denny and I kind of broke this all down by, uh, we're going to start big, and then we're going to get smaller. Um, so we're, we're going to dive right in, because there's there's a lot going on at Disney Springs, if you haven't been in a couple of years. And uh, we're going to start with the neighborhood. So if you're not familiar, when when downtown Disney moved on into, moved on out of Disney Springs, moved, moved on. on in, you know, when it, <laughs> when it left us, um, they kind of re, they redesigned the whole area. And uh, the area, like before, it used to be just kind of a straight line and there were three sections, basically. I think three sections. And then um, now that we have four neighborhoods now, so it's a little more of a little more of a free flowing, more circular kind of an experience. Um, so those neighborhoods, we got to talk about some of them. Um, well, we're going to talk about all of them. Uh, we're going to talk about the best ones first. Denny, what's your favorite of the neighborhoods and why? So, okay. So my favorite of the neighborhoods is town center and I, it's, it's probably, it's the one that received, the, um, I feel like the lion's share of the attention mm. when it, uh, the whole reimagining of Disney Springs or downtown Disney happened. So, and I know that the pushback on town center is it looks like an outlet mall. What are you talking about? And I get it. I, I hear that because that's where you're going to find things like Under Armour or Coach or, you know, the Sephora, that's my Sephora. So if I need something from Sephora, I'm heading over to Disney Springs. That's the closest one to me. But I really enjoy how wide open it is. There are some pinch points, but for the most part, it's pretty wide open. And it's just this whitewash aesthetic as far as it's, um, it's just a really nice neutral palette. So it just looks very clean. I like how they do the Christmas decorations. They'll hang chandeliers because we're fancy at Disney Springs. And uh, so it's chandeliers hanging. That's where the big Christmas tree will be in the middle. It's I, I find myself gravitating there and hitting up some of those stores, Polite Pig, whatever. So what's yours, Ryan? Yeah, actually, you know, it's funny. I was going to say Town Center uh, it probably has some of the places I frequent the most. It, it has a very California vibe to it because it is that it does remind me of that kind of Spanish like uh uh, I don't, I don't know the word. I'm not an architect, but, um, but it, it I, I also like how there's like a, a second story, and it's not necessarily for shopping per se. I mean, in some of the stores, you do have a second story, like Under Armour, um, but the idea that there are like apartments up there is what I always like to imagine. Like people are living up there and hanging out. But uh, Uniqlo and and Polite Pig are two places I frequent very often, and those are both they fall within that. That area, but I I do also really enjoy the landing, and the the landing is down kind of that strip where you go over the bridge if you've come out of the Orange Garage and you're headed toward, um, you know, the Edison or Jacques Lindsay's Hangar Bar or Boathouse. Like it's it's that area that's supposed to be kind of the power plant and the train. The switch for the train, I think, is supposed to be there. So I know these are all weird things that we're saying, but Disney Springs, they gave it an elaborate backstory, right? Like yeah. they turned mannequins, which used to be this night nightclub uh, extravagant thing with a spinning floor and this like cold spray. And it was just the coolest place ever. That is now Morimoto Asia. And that's supposed to be like the bottling factory, which was like the heart mm -hmm. of Disney Springs. And then the Edison is the power plant. And then if you look on the ground over over there you'll see a big turntable and that's supposed to be like where the train would turn around and then um you know all these all these different places and everything like that i feel like we could do a whole episode about just the backstory but i want to do it like um what's that uh pbs special jazz uh or something that uh um oh my gosh 
I'm forgetting the Ken name. Ken it's that Lacey, slow yeah. zoom effect into photos and they call it. Oh, Ken, Ken, Burns. Ken Burns. Yeah, Ken Burns. Ken yeah, Burns, Burns, Burns. The Ken Burns it. effect. Yeah, I was like, we need to do yeah. it like a Ken Burns documentary, I think. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I, I think the landing, because the landing for me, I, I feel like it's got a lot going on for it. But like you said, it also is not without pinch points because it's got a very like, it's got an L shape that happens. And I feel like you always kind of come around this this corner that's by like where Aaron McKenna's bakery is. Um, yeah. and the boathouse, like it gets a little tricky there because it's just kind of like people, it feels like hordes of people are coming around there. That's where you don't want to be if there's a zombie attack. Um, so if you're hearing any rattling or squeaking, my dog has found one of his toys right after I started recording and won't, well, is relentless right now. So I, I apologize. I try to get rid of as much of that as possible, but, um, no, I, and then, so there are two other neighborhoods, uh, and I feel like, one that was just kind of the in-between for us was the marketplace, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, if you are a Walt Disney World guest and you know from, I, I remember trips coming down, that's that's where you think of, like, I, I got to head there, I got to go to World of Disney, and of course, Trendy opened a little bit ago, and you want to hit up Trendy maybe, or maybe you're a big pin trader, so you need to go to the trading post that's where the Christmas shop is like days of Christmas. So that that's kind of what you think of when you think of, or at least that's what I would have thought of back in the day. Like, Oh, I've got to hit that yeah. up. I've got to get there, which totally, I mean, there are some, I'm in marketplace all the time because there are some great, you know, things, but there, that is where you'll kind of encounter some throngs of, of people as well. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's got some popular places like Ghirardelli. That's yeah. a, that's going to be a crowd pleaser. It's it's definitely the place where if you are going for a souvenir that like to bring yes. back to somebody, that's probably where you're going to find it. And I and I I think that's kind of what I think about it as is like this like souvenir alley area. But it does also have like um uh the Earl of Sandwich, which is a favorite amongst uh Disney Springs downtown Disney aficionados and. Um, you know, I, there's a margarita stand over there that usually has some live music. That's pretty good as well. And so there's, it's not, we're not saying it's not worth venturing over to. I'm just saying it kind of fell in the middle. It was just kind of like, I don't know. I just find that like, I'm only over there if I'm looking for a specific piece of merchandise. I'm not just, I'm not just browsing over there, but again, this is just our list. It, it, it could be different for you. That could be your favorite area. But one of the areas that we feel like falls short is the West side. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's got um soon soon to be uh Everglaze donuts mm-hmm. and cold brew. So looking for it cuz I'm going to love me a donut there, I'm sure. Um so I'm excited about that. Give me a snack and and I'm there. Um but for the most part, I mean there's <laughs> there's the Starbucks there. I'll go and work there sometimes. I'll meet up with a friend every month over there outside for coffee, but there it, it's just it's this long kind of expanse of yes there are shops and the movie theaters over there and stuff but it's it's not the first place i'm heading it to. seems to be the area that has consistently like within the history of downtown disney and disney springs that has difficulty defining its identity because it's got you know Cirque du Soleil on the one end and then you've got AMC and the stuff kind of in the middle has just always been like eh Uh, I mean you've got Splitsville which is nice but that's really that's never been really at least from my perspective considered like a very local friendly thing because it is it is a lot more expensive than just a local bowling alley that you could find somewhere else in Orlando um you know, I know that it is going through a transformation now because it has like City Works that opened, and uh, I en- I will talk about uh, places for like, uh, you know, a good place to have a drink or for a happy hour. I'll get into that in a little bit, but um, you know, it, it's always you got House of Blues, so it's a lot of like it's the venue area is what I felt like it's always been. Like you're you're not over there unless you're there for a spe- again a specific thing. So I think the reason why we like Town Center and the Landing is because they offer a little more of just a wandering. You know, like you can go in and be like, yes. what's you, what do you got over here? You know, um. So let's get into it a little bit more specific. So let's go into some of the best and worst shopping that we have uh, here. And again, we'll st- we'll start with the best. And what what do you think is your favorite shopping location at Disney Springs? Oh gosh, that's hard. Um, 
I gravitating toward, uh, you know, anthropology, I got to go into anthro, I got to check their clearance, their sales section, and they've been doing even um, more sale than normal. If you don't know where their sales section is, it's upstairs, it's all the way tucked in the back corner of the store. So you got to work for it to, uh, to hit up anthro, but I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'll kind of amble around the different shops and stores. I'll, I'll look in Zara if they have any deals or whatever, but the co-op, um, down in the marketplace, you know, Mm. even though it's a little bit further that I got to go to get there, I really, I do enjoy what they'll tuck into the co-op from including trendy. So that kind of, Mm-hmm. you know, encompasses trendy as well. Um, they're doing a little bit of a musical sh- chair shuffle right now with the shops in the marketplace co-op. So like the dress shop isn't just straight ahead and in the back anymore. It's kind of over and Wondergrounds moved as well. And the pet store is there. And well, it the used five to- and dime is like gone right now. Yes. I don't know if yeah, that's even yeah. a thing anymore. Yeah, twenty eighth and Maine. That's like what? It's all it's it's all just a little different. So you could just take it with a grain of salt. But I do enjoy uh, getting the stop by there. What about you? Um, no, I okay. So I, I'm gonna say this, and I really don't mean to offend anybody. And I, my I have this perspective, and everybody knows that I'm not somebody to be like oh gender roles or anything like that. But it does seem to me that Disney Springs as a whole seems to air when it comes to shopping specifically more toward women Um, because uh, unfortunately some of these stores that I want to be really cool, like Zara actually does have a a great men's section, but there is a Zara. I live at right near the mall in millennia and there's a Zara over there. If I need any of that. Also, I feel like I'm not cool enough to shop at Zara. Like I want (laughs) to be cool enough for like a cool jacket, but um, well, I appreciate that. But uh I, I do feel like there are a lot of like like I said stuff that's like and I'm not saying like oh basins for women because it's not I love the peppermint scrub uh you know but I I do feel like there are a lot of stores at Disney Springs that only carry female like product for for women um and so it's like I go in and I'm like oh where's the men's section and there and, mm. and I so I I do give Disney Springs like that little bit of a ding but with that said I think one of the I I think the store that does the incorporation the best of being a brand that came to live at Disney Springs, a, a, a Disney property, and rolls that into their product is Uniqlo. Um, I, the first time I ever went to Uniqlo, Uniqlo was uh, years ago in New York City. Um, you know, and their big thing, uh, I think the thing that brought them to fame was the really thin jackets that were like you could wear it during a blizzard and you'd still be like sweating underneath and and then you could roll it up and put it in like a bag and carry it with you and so it was all like warmer warmer weather wear and that's where like it was a little head scratching when it was coming here uh, but they have taken there is always a line of Disney something there's like Marvel there's there there's Disney I know they did Star Wars stuff um and I, I have to tell you that they, I got a pair of pants there that are like, have like that spandex stretch in them. Like, th- like American Eagle does. I always recommend American Eagle jeans. That force flex jeans will help, will help a guy who's got them thick thighs out real good. Uh, and there are the softest pants ever that have that stretch in it that I got at Uniqlo and I bought like three pairs of them because they are very conducive to my lifestyle in Florida. But, but I also love that I could go there and find like a unique Disney item and be like, oh, look at this cool Disney shirt that you can't get everywhere, you know, that you can only mm-hmm. get like here. Um, so I find that I'm often, often just checking out to see what they have. And they're, they're, they're re- very reasonably priced. I feel like their price, like, like, you know, like a shirt might be anywhere from like 10 to $15 or something like that. Um, but obviously, you know, I, I also think, you know, you're going for a, you know, you're going to get some Disney merchandise. You got to go to the world of Disney, you know? Yeah, you have to. And they're, they're doing, I mean, if you're there it, when uh, the crowds are higher, they'll do a vir- virtual queue. So they'll, you'll give them your 10 digit phone number and then they'll text you when they're ready to welcome you into the store. So you can go enjoy other shops and locations. So, um, but yeah, you kind of, you have to, you know, it's like a little pilgrimage. You got to go to 
World of Disney and check out all the stuff. And if you've not been here in a couple of years, you, you it's all new. Like it's they've redone the store and they've made it in different little pockets mm-hmm. and themed. And it's really it's nice in there. And there are a lot of people for sure. But you are going to find what you're looking for at World of Disney. So yeah. um, you just are. And going back to Uniqlo, you're exactly right with their Disney t-shirts. And if you are someone who wants a Disney t-shirt but doesn't like the way that Disney's Disney t-shirts fit, Uniqlo's fit differently. Yeah. And they're made of different cotton. And so just if if one doesn't suit you, the other might and if you're a bargain shopper, you can find really good deals at Uniqlo. Um, they'll put out every Friday evening, they'll put out a couple of racks upstairs. Gosh, you that, know the bargains. Oh, holy, holy oh, cow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. So they'll put they'll put out some they'll they'll pick um, a shirt or a pant or something like that. And they'll put them on clearance. And I've got a little orange jacket this little puffy bomberish jacket that i got for like 10 bucks so oh my gosh yeah so anyhow there's they've got great deals and it's affordable yeah i love a bargain i really do yeah. um and i i think that's a great place to they also have a lot of stuff that's just random that you kind of wouldn't like the umbrellas they have sunglasses there'll be like uh, just random kind of things in there that i i just think it's worth worth going in and i do feel like i have to bring up the lego store as well because there isn't a lego store everywhere in the world and it is kind of cool to have that i like i'm not i'm not uh i'm not like against legos or anything like that but eli it's like eli's therapy so and when he gets the really cool ones i think it's awesome like he got the nintendo that's like an actual like size Nintendo and it, you like had a cartridge and everything and it has the spring and goes down and I'm fascinated by it. But then you had a little TV you built and like the, the oh, scene moves on the TV. I was like, what? Um, that stuff I, yeah. I love. Um, and so I, I think that's, that's a really cool, unique shopping experience, but I don't know that there's anything that's like a store where like, that's terrible. That needs to close. I, I just think that like what I said earlier is that a lot of the stuff that, and I'm not saying like a man store. Oh, there needs to be a man store because there is that like, isn't there like a Levi store? And I always think about like men wearing jeans in Montana in the desert or something when I think of Levi jeans or that episode of Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum, the show on Disney yes, Plus. The denim. Yeah, the denim episode. I always think about that. But I just mean in terms of it being like, you know that like some H and M's didn't used to have like a men's section. Like there was yeah. like I, they eliminated the one where I grew up. The men's section out of that one, I remember being so bummed. And I I just I get I get frustrated by that sort of stuff because sometimes I'm like, oh, it's cool clothes. I'd love it if they made like a men's style or something like that. But no, that's a fair observation. You're right. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about dining. I know we never talk about dining on this show because that's for the Disney dining show. But I feel like in terms of when we're talking about Disney Springs as a whole, we do have to say like Disney Springs really leaned heavy into the dining experience. And um, and there there's some important stuff to do. Uh, you know, I already hinted at a happy hour, which I'll talk about. But I think Denny's is is really important that you brought up before we started about the uh, the affordable dining that you could find at Disney Springs. Yeah, it's um it, it's a great thing. It's like they they really took families and just anybody who is visiting Walt Disney World and who isn't looking to lay down a lot of cash on a meal, they took them into consideration when the whole retheming happened. And even beforehand with Oral Sandwich, like um that is that's the holy grail of affordable dining <laughs> in Walt Disney World. It's, it doesn't get much better than that, that you can roll out of there for under 10 bucks a person and you have something really substantial and quite good. Um, but yeah, for me, it's, it's, I, I love Blaze Pizza. Mm-hmm. I know it's not exclusive to Disney Springs. I get that there are Blaze Pizzas in every college town between the East Coast and the West Coast, but it's, it's for good reason. It's a fresh pizza that you get to stand there and say, yeah, I would like tomatoes and fresh mozzarella and I would uh, this and this and this, and it's made for you and you get to take it home. They have half size take home boxes. So I eat half the pizza Mm -hmm. there and the rest of the pizza 
is, you know, the, is the next day's lunch. But Deluxe Burger is fantastic. Um, I've talked, I've mentioned before about how I'll, I'll mobile order a kid's meal on, on the app because I, I, their burgers are ginormous. And yeah. if I'm not in the mood for a ginormous burger, man, that kid's burger is perfect. And, you know, you order fries with it and you're out of there and it's not that expensive. Yeah. So, you know, for me, that's, that's just, it's great to have the options available if you want them. What about you? Yeah, no, I I was going to say the, when Disney Springs first opened, that was the knock I kind of gave it is that there wasn't a lot of quick service. And then on top of that, it wasn't really affordable. But since then we did get places like Polite Pig, um, which Polite Pig is definitely, I, I definitely think it's on the affordable side. It can be like a little, like leaning a little, you you got to think you're, you're paying for this kind of like, it's um a really like craft kind of an experience, you know? Yeah. And no, I'd agree. yeah. And so like, you, and you're getting unique stuff in there. So it might be a couple extra bucks, but it's definitely one of those places where like when that opened, it was basically every time we were there, that's where somebody, somebody coming into town wants to go there. And so I, I had to be like, no, I will meet you when you're done eating. I'm not going to eat there anymore. Um, too many times. And then like, I, I do really love blaze as well because I think Disney Springs was in desperate need of that sort of a, you know, a, a, a consumable thing. If you're an annual pass holder, they give you discounts there. I, I, I'm not sure if it extends to like DVC and stuff like that too. But, um, and what's great about that is, I, the ding I would give Disney Springs in terms of dining is there aren't a lot of a, a ton of options, I feel like, uh, and they're getting better about um, like, I, I want to say on the healthier side. And some people can say, well, you're at a theme park, you're on vacation, but some people have medical conditions that they whether they're on vacation or not they really can't afford to be like and not monetarily i mean medically can't afford to be eating like that really ever um so i would just say keep that in mind but there with that said there are a couple options what i love is i did go to blaze actually is the only place i've eaten at disney springs where i was like okay nobody's here and um I got like a cauliflower, cauliflower crust pizza and it was, oh my gosh, it was so good. And I got it. I basically got like a vegan version of it. Cause I was like, I want to try all this stuff. And, um, there's a, there's a, uh, what do you call them? Like a little freestanding building, like, uh, like a booth. I don't know. Like mm-hmm. that there, there's a, when you come out of the orange garage, um, uh, by the, uh, by the side of the movie theater, there's a place called Yasaki. Yep. And I really like Yasaki mm-hmm. because you can get kind of like poke. Um, and the menu's limited, but it's it's like what they have, I really do. I really do enjoy. And I do feel like it leans on the healthier side. You got to be careful with that salty, some of the saltier uh, sauces and soy sauces and stuff like that. So, um, but. And they'll do seasonal offerings as well at Yasaki. Oh. So that's. Oh, that's yeah. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Yes. They'll get in on the wonderful of flavors stuff. So maybe they'll do something for the holidays as well. Yeah. That would be fantastic. You know what I think they started doing there too that I, I knew was a thing at Epcot was like the frozen beer because I, I didn't used to know mm-hmm. that was a thing. Also, it's like such a gimmick that it's like you don't really want the frozen beer. It's the It just freezes the foam on top, but then you go to drink and the stuff just kind of falls and hits you in the face. And you're like, <laughs> but but yeah, like, some people might want to say, I want to try it this one time. And then you don't have to like go into Epcot into the Japan Pavilion. You can get it right there at Disney Springs and sometimes it's so hot that that's all you want is that frozen frozen something or other but um yeah I I what about what about special restaurants what would you recommend so I think my favorite in terms of like the the bigger the restaurants that you're gonna go for I I think I like Morimoto Asia the best um okay. what I love about Morimoto Asia is that you can get quick service outside at the street foods um area but they also if you're looking for something like a little more like oh, I want to go inside they have like a bar like a little lounge room area and they do like a late night menu uh there they used to I'm not 100% sure if that's that's back or not but um but then I have I have been fortunate enough to have dined there like two or three times and it was uh, really, it, I enjoyed all those experiences. And it was like, there is, I have to recommend, there is a sake sangria that always says it like serves like two to three, but I, I think it was like five to six. And it's affordable, yeah. it's delicious, and it's different. I like things that are like different. And the ribs there are great. The duck there is good. The dessert that I told Denny about, it's one that's got like lemon curd and it's like purple. So I think it's like ube. 
oh my gosh, it is so good. If they, whenever that, like when I get to the, uh, I've had it twice now because the first time I had it, it was like a whole like anniversary dinner. And then that, that last time it was just on whim where I was like, do you have this dessert, please? I hope. And they did. So, um, (laughs) I definitely recommend it though. What what do you think is your favorite of those like kind of sit down places? Oh goodness. Okay. So I want to say I love, I say I love a lot. I'm so sorry, but um, the boathouse is so, so good. The swordfish, excellent. They do a great job. But one that I really enjoyed right before everything closed down was Enzo's Hideaway. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for something that's just a little different, literally it's, it's created to be like a speakeasy. So there's graffiti and scribbling all over the walls. It's just a place. It's nice and cool down there. It's, it's a place that literally you walk over. So if you're not looking for it, like you're not going to trip over it. So, you know, just look, look for it and, and stop. It's hard when you're in Walt Disney world because everything is good. And you just roll in with a list of things you want to try and restaurants. You have to have to go to on your vacation. I get it. But if you have any wiggle room at all, stick that on there, stick Enzo's hideaway on there and just enjoy some really good Italian food in a really cool, eclectic environment. And it's not, you're not going to, I'm not, we're not going to steer you wrong here. Like it's, you'll enjoy Yeah, I I think the venue is really cool. Like when you get inside of there, Mm -hmm. I think you don't even realize like how big it's going to kind of be when you get in there. Not not to say like it's enormous, but it, they did a really good job with the interior of that, um, that building. And also again, like you could go, there is a bar that you could go sit at. And, uh, I had to second guess myself for a second, but I, I have sat there once before because Craig, uh, and Kylie and I did a wonderful video like two years ago, I think, or something. I don't even know what is time anymore. Um, uh, <laughs> but it's the one where I'm shouting about the DVD and the drink at the, on the top of paddle paddlefish. But, um, the, I, I, they had, they had a really cool themed drink there. Um, but it's also like, it's, it, it's like what you said, it's got this vibe where you're like, Ooh, I'm in a secret area. How cool. Um, it is. It's very cool. I also okay. So I feel like I want to just talk about um, places t- like bars, uh, lounges, and bars that they have there as well. Um, because uh, Denny and I both agree, I think there's one that's worth stopping at, and and I like the perspective because Denny doesn't drink, but you said one that was on my list right away because you you said the snacks are great there, and that's Shock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. Absolutely, and if you're an Indiana Jones fan, please go. Yeah. Because you're just going to find so many great things from the, you know, the names of the different drinks and, uh, s- you know, snacks, bites that they've got on the menu. Like it's all themed. It's dripping with Indiana Jones nostalgia. You're going to love it if if you're a fan. But yeah, last year for the Wonderful of Flavors, they did this amazingly huge pretzel, salted pretzel. And it was, it had charcuterie kind of tucked into the openings of the pretzel, great, um, bold mustard, just so good. If you give me a snack, I will love you forever. I don't even care. (laughs) So it was, it was really, really enjoyable. And as someone who doesn't drink, yeah, I would go there in a heartbeat if, if you're giving me a great creative inventive snack. Yeah. And what's cool, uh, what's cool about it too, is that they do have some really uh, interesting uh, mixed drinks and um, also like non-alcoholic mixed drinks too. So they didn't, they didn't leave everybody out, which I, I always appreciate when a place tries to do that, which has like the mocktails and stuff like that, or the zero ABV drinks. Um, But I, if you're into like collective drinkware, like Trader Sam's and stuff like that, they have a couple of collectible, uh, mugs there personally i have the uh the gorilla head um i forget what it was called it's like monkey brains or something like that but um but i i i i'm happy i went and got it also um they take uh or they used to take tables in wonderland if you still have it i don't oops i don't even know if you can sign up for that anymore or not mine has officially expired now so i don't know if they're taking new people or not so don't quote me on that but um I do. I also- think they were. Oh, okay. I think they were. Um, because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'd I'd get it again after my one year of having it. Mm-hmm. I think I was like, oh, I I think this was this was worth it for me. Um, 
I mean, most of the year I had it, it was stuff was closed, I guess. So whatever. But um, I think that the Edison in terms of it being a place to go and experience like for me, I think the Edison is best experienced through drinks um because if you are somebody that does have an appreciation if you're somebody who's like you're just there for a drink it's whatever if you're somebody who appreciates like craft cocktails and like the history of that sort of a thing there is a lot of incredibly knowledgeable bartenders there and very very unique drinks on that menu and i have had discussions with multiple bartenders there um just kind of about the process that goes into like where the drink comes from why it's on the menu and all this stuff and they are people that are clearly like very dedicated to that craft and i am just starting my journey into that sort of stuff learning about making like old fashions and things and and all that um so for me, it's it's really kind of experience, and they are they have one of the earlier happy. So the happy hour schedule, as I talk about it, has shifted because of like when everything reopened. I think a lot of places the happy hour is going on longer. A lot of places added happy hours. So I'm speaking more from a perspective of what it was like right before it closed. And I checked the other day, anywhere that did have the happy hour still has a happy hour. I'm just not 100 percent certain on when they start and all of that stuff, but. Um, The Edison definitely had one and it used to go from like one to six. So it was a really long one. And it was one of the places that started earlier. And um, the Edison, like the drinks are not inexpensive there, but during happy hour, you could get like these really creative drinks for like six or seven dollars. And I feel like it's great. Like I've met like listeners there before um, to just chat a little bit. And I checked yesterday there is some outdoor seating. So you if you don't want to go inside like myself, there is some there was some outdoor seating where I was like, "Oh, thank thank goodness because I was I was feeling the itch to try and go back and I was like, "No, I don't want to go inside." But um I used to do what I called a happy hour hop sometimes where if I knew I was going to be there for a long time, like sometimes I'm there for work and then I know I've got to meet like Eli later or something or there's a movie, so I'm like, "Well, you know, I know I'm going to be here for like 12 hours. I might as well have like one or two drinks here and there." I, I do you do the Edison and then um I know that uh Paradiso has some but Paradiso is like it's whatever for me it's right in the middle it's not, I'd put it lower on the side I feel like the, the quality has kind of dipped in years past but Stargazer's Lounge at uh Planet Hollywood however you feel about the inside of Planet Hollywood that outside area is really great they have like a really extensive menu uh, a, a lot of local beers are there and the and the drinks are very, very inexpensive. And um, also the Hole in the Wall, which is the bar outside of uh, Raglan Road, they have like $5 beers and they have like Crooked Can, which is a local brewery um, just down the street in Winter Garden. And so there's there's a bunch of places now that I feel like if you are looking to go have a, a, a drink, like and. I, I recommend going during those happy hour times right now because nobody – Disney Springs during the day is so much more manageable than it is at night right now. Yeah, it really is once um, you know once the sun starts to set because we've got earlier times now in the theme parks. And so Disney Springs really is the only nighttime destination right now. So and, – and people really do descend upon it. Now, granted, capacity is still limited – but it's even you 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 feel the the push and the pull and the pinch a little bit more um, at night. So absolutely, if you you know want to go check some of these great locations out, it, earlier in the day is going to be better. And another you know with going back to Jack Lindsay's, they have outdoor seating mm-hmm. as well, and yeah, and yeah. some really cool themed like you can sit inside of a boat right at. Yeah. Jack Lindsay. So it's it's fun. So, yeah, I, I don't want to knock, uh, you know, because you also said about the boathouse. And yes, that is on the pricier side. But if you're looking to go, there is a bar that's out on the water, too, yeah. which is which is nice as well. So that's that's a nice one to point out. I, I think that um, I, I think they've really especially right now, I think a lot a lot of these places are offering a lot more like these happy hour because I know the Italian um the place that's on the corner. I, I forget the name. Be- no, the other one. The oh, the one by like, yeah, mm-hmm. they they have an outdoor bar as well and they've been doing one. And so I, I'm just speaking from the ones I went to because I like those ones better. But um, a lot of places now have it. Um, CityWorks has one as well and they have a huge outdoor uh, patio. And since there are not a lot of people, especially right now because House of Blues isn't doing any concerts and, and Cirque du Soleil is closed, like there is a big like 
like outdoor patio you can sit out and and enjoy a beverage and they have like i think something like they said like 50 beers on tap or something like that but um i i think there's a lot of places that if you are trying to get out of the house and you want like me that was that like you're looking for like maybe that camaraderie that you can still be responsible and socially distance with i think there disney springs does actually offer several locations that you, you know can put you in that sweet spot and it's about going at the right time of day yep. because one of the things we have to say right now is that uh one of the worst things that's going on there right now are those crowds at night unfortunately it's like what like what denny said yeah there are moments that i find myself now uh, granted yeah it's not as bad as it was before COVID hit uh, obviously but um but there are still points where it is just if I'm going from point A to point B and the straightest route between the two is just going to it's going to be more crowded. It's going to be impossible to physically distance yeah. distance. And I'll find myself because <laughs> I'm a dork like this. I will hold my breath as I am shooting through a spot that I jo- just go, well, OK, I need to get over there. And so I got it. And one of those is, you know, that narrow space between Uniqlo and Polite Pig and Levi's Harley Davidson, that, that little row there headed yeah. toward wor- world of Disney. So I just kind of go <gasps> and off we go. Um, so it's, you know, it is, you just have to, sometimes you gotta, you know, just plan it out so that, cause navigating can be hard sometimes. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, especially that area because you got Lime Garage spilling out, um, and you know as it, it's getting busier and busier, you know you'll you'll start to be like, oh no, oh no, like it's like a, it's just it's you're playing a game of The Walking Dead, and how do you avoid how do you avoid people? But um, we should also talk about uh, um, do we talk about uh like the, so the enhancements like uh, I'm sorry not enhancements well yes we are going to talk about enhancements but I meant experiences as well because there is the food and dining the shopping um and then there's like those other places that are you know there's a little bit more to it um like honestly I would have put the AMC on the best list but it's I not really I don't really want to record there's no movies to see first of all really right now and then on top of that it's the movie theaters are still kind of in that red zone of, of going to. Um, but if you ever do get the chance, it's got a great Dolby cinema in there. You can order the food. Um, and, and most of the theaters, you can get the food delivered right to you while you're sitting there, which is honestly great. Um, and yeah, I miss that but you, Dolby you, theater, man. Oh it's my gosh. The best. I know. I know. <laughs> Those big fluffy recliners. And it doesn't matter. Even if it's full, you uh. still feel like you have that space around you. Yep. I miss movies. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, but you you also, you brought up a good point is like Disney Springs at night still has a lot of live entertainment. Yeah. So live entertainment um, is something that we all want to see. And on the, you know, on the heels of the disappointment of a lot of the live entertainment um, going away at Walt Disney World, there are some acts that are coming back to Disney Springs, which is, um, it's really encouraging. So Every night, if you've not been to Disney Springs to kind of experience it, at every night there will be different um, venues, smaller venues for live entertainment. So under some of the elevated tracks in the landing, they'll have, uh, you know, a musical group playing or the there's a great, and I don't know their name, but a great improv rap duo. That oh, Oh it's my God. So I, I interviewed them too. And they're friends of my friend, Lindsay, and okay. I always forget their name and I feel terrible. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, if you remember <sighs> it, drop it in the show notes. Yeah. I'll put it in here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> drop it in there. But like Hayes over Hollywood, they're a group that plays there, a musical group. They've got a DJ over on the stage in the marketplace again, which is really, really nice because that's what makes it so uniquely Disney and family friendly, right? Is the fact that you can stop and enjoy some of this entertainment and you know um, that it's not going to be anything off color for your kids. It's just going to be a lot of fun. And it's an important layer that it's nice that it's been added back into the scheme of things for Disney Springs. Yeah, I, it definitely, it adds 
I, I always say that like a Disney park, you know, has a different life to it at night when the lights turn on and things like that. And Disney Springs is no different. It definitely has a completely different vibe. And yes, right now when we are trying to avoid crowds, that kind of becomes like a scary thing. But that live entertainment does really bring a different like character to 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 the springs um you know and what's great too is um and we might as well just shift into it now is some of the enhancements that happen because it some of that includes shifts into live entertainment and like in years past we've had like there's a mac store there and we would have the mac um snowball thing would happen for like a weekend and it sounds something where you're like all right well, i don't care i don't like i'm not buying mac like makeup or anything uh but it is one of the coolest like I love a good dance show. So, and it was one of the coolest things that I feel like I'm so happy I filmed it because like people were dressed so trendy and they did like these really awesome dances and, and it just like, it puts you in like a, this like mood and you're like, ah, oh, it feels so great. But there, there's some other holiday enhancements coming this year too, that I feel like are going to lean on that better, yes. that best side of things. Absolutely. We're going to have the Christmas. Tree. So the Christmas tree trail is no more for this year. So if you looked forward to that last year, it was so crowded back in there last year. It was ridiculous. So it's a good thing that they are spreading the trees out this year. So they've told us um, that the Christmas trees that normally would have been in the trail are going to be sprinkled throughout Disney Springs. So how fun is that, that maybe you could do with your traveling party, you could do a, a little bit of a scavenger hunt. Like, where's the Lion King tree? Where's the Sleeping Beauty tree? Where's the Magic Kingdom tree? That kind of thing. That would be a lot of fun to, to just kind of, it, it'll be fun to experience that um, kind of popping up. Oh, there. yeah. I, I actually like as much as I have enjoyed the Christmas tree trail, uh, it, it felt like it got, just was like a tunnel of crowded for me. I <laughs> love the idea that this is going to be like spread out like that now, because then it's just like it, you know, my complaint with any of the parks whenever they do the holiday decorating, especially at Magic Kingdom, um, you know, and that's why I think Hollywood Studios did it best like last year where it was like throughout the park Magic Kingdom. Like, it's just kind of like Main Street and it didn't really continue onward and you kind of like want that. And uh, so I'm I'm kind of really excited to see that they're, you know, taking a new creative look at that sort of thing. And obviously with that, I'm hoping we get lots of themed snacks and uh, drinks and stuff. That I that would be great. Yeah, I, I, there was a like cranberry gin drink uh it was either last year or the year before and i remember like oh, i i just love i love i'm a sucker for cranberries and a drink because of where i grew up but like it's also very christmasy to me and uh give me something with eggnog give me that holiday stuff i could start finally transitioning from halloween i'm still in that emotional i'm still a, <laughs> i'm still like you can't pull i refuse to get rid of my jack-o-lantern he hasn't started uh deflating just yet so i i'm like you can stay out here and smile at me a little bit longer oh that is so cool yeah that's something that disney springs really does a good job with is getting into the seasonal you know kind of fun things like you know the wonderful of flavors that's great um that so many different uh, locations get in on that and go oh yeah we'll do a special little something or other and we'll you know, offer this for this limited time. So it's kind of, again, like a scavenger hunt, trying to find out which one is your favorite. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I hope we we definitely get some of that. I can't believe I didn't bring it up earlier, but I, I, the daily poutine is one of the best <gasps> things, I feel like. It has to be mentioned. Uh, because they also, it, it's affordable. It's a good, you can share it if you want. Maybe not nowadays, but like you could, you could have. But, um, but the... Like now I'm like, well, now I have my own excuse to be selfish because <laughs> it's just for me. And yeah. I, you know, it's not CDC recommended to share with you. So it's just for me. Um, but I, they, they do always these like really creative, like for St. Patrick's day, not this year, but they, they had like a corned beef one mm -hmm. and, um, they do all these, uh, they've had a breakfast one in, in years past that I still haven't had. That was like tater tots with like egg and all that stuff on it. Um, That's and it's just cool. fun little quick things to to stop and grab and and go with you know it's it's fries and cheese and whatever and so super unhealthy but treat yourself you know <laughs> so <laughs> right you're on vacation just enjoy yeah. it yeah. yeah i've never been to the daily boutine <laughs> <laughs> what i'm shocked right now is it the gravy what is it does it not appeal yeah. to you yeah it just 
sounds like it's so heavy. Like that would just sit in my stomach and make me, you know, just unhappy. But I'll I say love the, cheese, so. Well, th- I, I was going to say, I feel like for me, the basic is the one I like the least, which is just the okay. gravy and the cheese. So you you got, if you're going in, you got to go in. Like there was a cheeseburger one they did. Oh my gosh, so good. We're talking like deconstructed cheeseburger over your French yeah. fries. So just get oh. it all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, well, and there's Chicken Guy too. And we. And, oh yeah. Well, you got to talk about I that. Know, yeah. You know, so much people say Chicken Guy all the time, but. Chicken guy is so affordable. Those sauces are just fresh. They're freshly made and they're fun, inventive things. So you have to at least stop at chicken guy once. Yeah. I think chicken guy was also a great one where you are there and maybe you're like, oh, I'm hungry, but I don't want to go. Like it's it's one of those good ones where you're like, okay, a, a grab and go sort of situation yeah. if you need it. Because that, like I said earlier in the episode, that was my thing is Disney Springs didn't have a lot of these. And I think that chicken guy is actually probably like the definitely that like right there in that like number one area for it. I mean, um, but yeah. So I'm sure we left something out that we're going to start later and be like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe we didn't say this. Uh, I, I do want to say before we go, though, if you uh, uh, one of the best things I think at Disney Springs is actually the guest relations building. I forget what it's yes. called. Um mm-hmm. And it's got like rocking chairs outside of it. Uh, they mm-hmm. had couches inside. But if you have any issue with like a ticket or anything like that, I recommend going there instead of like dealing with it in a park because you might have to wait a couple of minutes, but at least it's like comfortable. They have like water there that you can, you know, in a fountain thing yep. that you can get. And so it's like it's a, it's a really good experience that can make something that you're stressed out about go a lot better there. So definitely props. To yeah. Yeah. They, I agree with that. They, they went from their little location that used to be sandwiched between like Ghirardelli or like Rebus Brothers and yeah, yeah. the co-op to this big, massive building. And they did a great job and they've branched off and they've got a, their own little ticket center now, just mm-hmm. kind of diagonally across the walkway. So yeah, they're doing it right over there. That's for sure. Yeah, so um, definitely recommend them. Shout out to all those cast members too, all the cast members that are that are at Disney Springs and dealing with yes. mask enforcement and things like that. So, yep. um, well, I think that will do it. Obviously, we're going to need to hear about what all of you out there listening or watching think is the best. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave comments down here. Again, like I said, we are always open to future discussion topics. So thank you very much, Denny, for breaking this down with me. You got it. Anytime, Rhino. Uh, And thank you, everybody out there for listening and watching. And when you are planning your next Disney vacation, we do ask that you please consider booking with Dreams Unlimited Travel. It will cost you nothing extra on your vacation. And the experts over there can really help you just not have to deal with the headache of any of that stuff and save you usually save you some money too without you having to do that extra effort so uh dreams unlimited you help support the show by booking with them so we we very much appreciate it uh and that is going to do it for this episode but we will be back with another episode of the best and worst of walt disney world bye everybody